nihilism. The universe is a cruel, uncaring void. Is. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Taking. We are born alone and we die alone. Over. You've gone right down the hole, mate. Right down it. The. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. World. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. The primary problem with nihilism is what they call the abyss. A lot of you already know what it is. Some of you may not. That doesn't matter. Now I have a solution to that, and it is not what you think. I'll get into it shortly. But first, let's establish what the what philosophical circles have already established the void to be. And so without further ado, it's Philosophy Time! <laughs> Beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. For when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. Now it's important to note that Nietzsche found something very real here. That being said, he had the wrong idea of what it was. Are you familiar with the abyss? The abyss can also be referred to as existential dread. It's... It's very similar to just plain old depression. Just... Any, any kind of depression. Only it comes from a place of realizing that you don't matter. You are not significant. Nothing around you matters. Nothing you have ever done or will ever do matters. And never will. A lot of Eastern philosophers have very specific proposed solutions to the problem of Nietzsche's existential nihilism. My apologies in advance if I accidentally keep referring to the abyss as the void, as those are not identical. It is the abyss to which I'm referring right now. Do not gaze into the abyss. For there are monsters down there. It is very scary in the abyss. Do not go in there. Brave Nietzsche has gone before you. Follow Nietzsche's good example and go no further. Think not about the universe and your place within it. Yeah. Gah, get out of here. Get out of here. No, in all seriousness, Nietzsche... I appreciate you, bud. You, you did some good work. You set up some good stuff, but you're a little bit too pessimistic in your worldview. But that'll happen when you get a weirdo like Nietzsche proselytize. Prof. Spouting his worldview. <clears throat> a void appears here that nothing in the world can fill. A gaping abyss opens at the very ground upon which one stands. In the face of this abyss, not one of all the things that had made up the stuff of life is of any use. Such a fucking spaz. <laughs> Thanks for the glasses, Brit. <laughs> That was a quote from one of my new favorite philosophers, excuse me. Ooh, nip slip. One of my new favorite philosophers, uh, Kaiji Nishitani, Kiji, Kiji, Kaiji. Kaiji Nishitani. Kaiji Nishitani. That's how you pronounce the man's name. Got it. Now, Kaiji, along with a very large number of Eastern philosophers, have opened their eyes to the abyss and they have seen it and experienced it. They have a word for it. When all of the small doubts gather up to create one massive doubt. In Japanese, it is... I really hope it's Japanese. A lot of these Eastern philosophers turn to some form of religion as an answer. And I almost did too. I almost did too. Just check out that last video I made. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was fun. So, what's the problem here? And what's my solution? <laughs> the problem, if I'm being honest, is that nobody seems to understand what the abyss really is. When I realized, when I made this analogy in my head, it talks about it as if it opens beneath you. Standing on firm ground 
That is incorrect. So imagine with me. Okay, here we go. Imagine you're going about your life. Maybe it's a trauma, like it was for me. Everything goes black. And then something happens. You see light through your eyelids. You've been floating this whole time in this abyss. Everybody else is floating in this abyss with you, but their eyes are still closed. You see how deep the void goes. You start to fall because you realize you can. And now this is where it gets somewhat personal. This, this is all fine and, <laughs> fine and good. <laughs> did I not promise you guys a solution? Yes, I did. I don't know if I can help you get there. I'd, I'd become accustomed to the fall. I thought this was all it was. I, I think I see something over here. So I go back and I look at it. I went back. It can be done. The abyss represents purpose. You're only tumbling through the abyss because you think you're special enough to require your own special purpose. Me too. If you can let go of the need for purpose, you can be free. It's been an illusion the whole time. Some people may call this spirituality. Some people may think this is being too metaphysical or spiritual. And you could argue in some philosophies, maybe it is. But I submit to you that the only reason having no purpose hurts is because we as self-aware human beings think we're special enough that we deserve one and we require one. We are the same as the rocks and the trees and the wind and the stars and empty space and each other and everything. It's very exhilarating. <laughs> you do not simply transcend the abyss and then it is over. You must continue to transcend the abyss. You, my friend, and me, we are the universe experiencing itself. You can try to let go of your existential dread without turning to religion. All right, guys, that's it. That's all. That's all of it. That's everything you need to know about the universe. If you like this kind of content, you like what I'm doing here, subscribe, support me. Next week's video is likely going to be slightly less philosophical on the face of it, but there's philosophy there. You'll understand. It'll be somewhat polarizing, so subscribe for that. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Roll outro! Ah, uh, why is my eye level? Gotta be so damn high up! Uh, how do I turn it yellow? Not good enough! It's pretty dead. Whoa! Six and a half hours later. Nihilism.